Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today, I'm going to kind of combine a few different projects I've done before in a new way. I've done a, a modal that pops up and I've done an image gallery that has like an infinite sliding effect. Today, we're going to combine the two. And so what you're going to have here is a list of images like this, and you can click on any of these and it'll open up this pop up modal. And you can slide through these just like this. When you get to the very, very end, it slides back around like it's just an infinite gallery. Now you can use tab keyboard events like this and actually click on these indicators. You can click on them manually as well with your mouse. You can close out here. You can close out by clicking or you can close out with the escape key. However you close out, it'll shut it down and then allow you to jump back into another gallery. So this is what we're going to work on. And today we're just going to look at the HTML and the CSS that kind of gets this base site ready just like this. Now, one quick note before I show you how to follow along with the code. And that is typically when you're building things like this out, there's a lot of complexity here and you're usually best served to actually use some kind of library that's thought of all these use cases. However, the reason I'm showing you how to do this is because I think just the process of having to think through this is really helpful for learning JavaScript. So I hope that just the process of going through this will be really helpful for you, even though you should probably use a library if you're going to do this on any kind of large client site or anything like that. Okay, let me go ahead and show you the uh, GitHub. If you come here, just make sure you select Lesson 1 Starting Point as the branch, and I'll have a link to this in the description. And then you can go ahead and download the code right here and open it in your favorite code editor. Or you can, of course, clone the whole thing and just navigate to the branch you want. All right, once you've got it opened up, it should look something like this. So you've got some data files here with nothing really going on. Um, it's just a single file, actually. It's just a large JSON file. We'll look at that next time. And then you've got a bunch of images here, and these are from Unsplash, uh, which has a bunch of free images that are great quality. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is to add an index.html page. Index.html. And then I'm going to open this up, and uh, let's add some boilerplate here. And I'll just call this, uh, let's call this pop-up image slider. All right, and then before I do too much more, um, let's come over here, and I'm going to open this in Chrome over this way. And all we're going to do actually in here is just have that central kind of div. We're going to just call it container. That'll be the class. And inside that, we're going to have another div with the class of image container. I'm going to go to expand that out. And inside here, we're actually going to have those three images are going to live inside of buttons. Now, you, you might wonder why are we putting these inside of button tags? Well, you get a lot of default keyboard events and things like that when you use buttons. And so we're just going to do it that way. That'll be easier for people to navigate to. And we don't have to add a bunch of tab indexes ourselves and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to have a button here with the class of image uh, item. And then I'll expand that out. And inside here, we're going to have an image. And we'll just have the source be our images folder. And I've got a relative path here. And we'll go food. And then food, let's see, this one, the small one. We'll give it an alt of food. Now, eventually when we get around to the JavaScript, we're gonna to try to trigger uh, these click events based off a couple of custom data attributes. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those now. So I'll say data-modal equals true. And then I'll say data-gallery equals food, the name of the gallery. This corresponds to the JSON file itself. If we were to open this up over this way, uh, you would see that this the name of this gallery is food, the name of the next one is mountains, and the name of the final one is plants. So we're going to use those names here in this data-gallery, which is just a custom attribute. All right, and then anything with this data-modal equals true will open up our modal eventually when we get around to building that. All right, so that's how I've got it set up. And actually what I need to do, put this on the wrong thing. This needs to be on button. You probably saw that. All right, and then let's just copy this down twice. And we're going to change... Um, the items here. So let's see, food, both of these need to be mountains. And then this needs to be mountain. Let's see, mountains, I think. And then this is just mountain, singular. And let's save it and see what pulls up. All right, so we've got some things pulling up. That's good. I'm going to come back over here and let's say plants here. And this can be plant as well. And then both of these will be plant. And then I think that one's plants like that. Let's save it. All right, so we're loading small images here, and then we'll use the big images in the gallery. That's why I've got these set out like that. All right, so that's all the HTML we're going to do on this kind of base page. I do need to go ahead and add a link to a CSS sheet. 
So we're going to say CSS, and let's let's put it inside a folder called CSS. So again, a relative path, css.style.css. All right, and then we need to actually create that. So let's have a folder. It's called CSS. Inside here, you guessed it, style.css. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open this up, and let's do a few things. Let's first of all add a basic clear. So let's save that, and you see it actually takes effect. Let me close this sidebar to give us a little bit more room. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is declare some variables on the root. This will help us with colors. Uh, I'm not going to do a whole lot else other than colors, but I prefer to use CSS variables whenever I can. I've done some videos on that before. You're welcome to check them out on the channel. First of all, we're going to have a basic hue to the site. This is like a little blue color, and we're going to use this in the other colors that we create. And then here I'm going to have a background like this, and then I'll do a var of hue. And then I'm going to have the percentage for the, let's see, hue, saturation, lightness. So the saturation will be 50%, and then the lightness on this background will be 96%. All right, let's copy this down, and I'm going to have two more. So I'm going to have a text here. And this text will be the same, except here we're going to have 70% hue. So a little bit, or saturation, so a little bit more of that color. And then we're only going to have 9% on the brightness. And then finally, here we're going to have 3% and 70%. We're going to call this one dark. I'm going to save those. We're not using them yet. And you may be wondering why these aren't wrapped in HSL, because they're not useful like this. Um, and we'll wrap them down below. And I just do that so I can quickly add an alpha channel on the fly when I'm writing CSS. All right, next let's grab the body. I'm not sure why that's suddenly very small, but we want the min height here to be 100 view height. And then we're going to say display of grid and then place uh, items center. And that will put everything exactly in the middle of the page. Next for the background, uh, not background color, but the background itself, we're going to do a linear gradient. And here what we're going to do is we want the HSL here, and we're going to wrap text, and then do a comma, and do HSL again, and here we're going to do uh, dark. That's just a little expansion I have to make that quicker. And if I save it, you see it has just a slight gradient from lighter to a darker color. All right, everything here lived inside of something called container. And so let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit more space and work on that. I want the max width here to be... Um, Let's see, 1200 pixels, I think is what I had that set at. And then margin auto, so it stays in the center. And then we had all the images inside an image container. Here we're going to say display a flex, and we're going to say flex a wrap of wrap. And then we will justify content here, center. And we'll do a gap of one rem to separate those images, well, the buttons slightly. All right, now the flex children were just all things called image. Uh, item like that. Those are the buttons themselves. We're going to say flex one zero thirty percent, and that will basically set them as much as possible, taking up thirty percent of the space. And that should give us enough room. We could do a little bit smaller just to make sure that they stay three wide as long as possible. So something like that. And then we're going to set the cursor here to zoom in. All right. What that means is when I come over here and I hover, it's going to give me this little zoom in uh, cursor by default. Now inside these buttons themselves, we're going to have the images. And again, I've got some random small image tag. I'm not sure what's going on there, <laughs> but we'll do width of 100%, a height of 100%, and then object uh, fit cover. Object fit is kind of like when you do a background image and you want the, let's see, what is that background size, I think, uh, for cover or contain or whatever, but it's for individual objects. And then lastly, let's come in here I've saved it there. You see they kind of go three wide uh, automatically. And then they should actually snap down when they can no longer do that. Let's see if it'll do that for us. Oh, you know what? I probably should put a, some kind of minimum width so that they don't get too tiny. So let's do that. Let's come up here and we'll say uh, min width. And let's do something like 200 pixels. And yeah, now they won't get super tiny. So they'll be about like that. Uh, but they're fully responsive, which is kind of nice. So they try to stay 30% as long as they can, and then they eventually snap down, which is what you'd expect with Flex. All right, now what we want to do is we want to grab the image item anytime there is a hover or there is focus. 
and then we're going to grab the image itself. And when that happens, we're going to put a little transform on this and just scale it up slightly. So we'll say transform and then scale of 1.03. All right, so now when I come in here and I hover over these, they should just pop up like that. Now that's a little rough and ready, so let's go ahead and add a transition. And we'll do, um, let's see, just on the transform property. Transform, and we'll do 250 milliseconds. We could do ease, something like that. Come in here and they kind of ease up and down. Now you might actually want to come in here and add something a little more special than that. And let's see, if you click on this little icon in Chrome, you can actually adjust this and get your own little cubic bezier um, if, curve if you want to. So I could come in here, something like, I don't know, how does something like that look? And then I can come in here and actually test it out live. And they kind of pop up a little more suddenly. So I like that. So I'm going to copy that all out and let's see, paste it in here. That should be correct. And now, I think we're done for now with the basic HTML and CSS. So let me kind of walk you through what we're going to do next time. We're getting this overflow here. Maybe we should add an overflow hidden. So I'll do overflow uh, hidden, something like that. Let's see, does that change? Yeah, there we go. All right, so now the image itself is popping up, um, but the button never pops outside of its image container. I don't know. You may like that better. You may not. Uh, there's other ways to handle that overflow. What we're going to do next time is we're going to work on just getting the modal to pop up and to display how we'd want it to. We'll just do like a, a fake image for time being. We're going to load all of that with JavaScript. We will have to write all the HTML in JavaScript and the CSS in JavaScript and load that on page load. So we'll do that next time. And then in the final video, we'll work on the actual image slider and everything that's involved in that. All right, next time we're jumping into JavaScript. Get ready. I'll catch you then. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.